At the beginning of 2023, I set two goals. Number one, it was to be able to read from memory, from Surah Al-Nas to Surah Al-Furqan. Number two, it was to make $1 million profit. Alhamdulillah, we are getting close to the end of 2023 and those goals have been accomplished already. In the past few years, I have mastered not just the art of setting goals, but the science of smashing them. From not knowing a word of Arabic to teaching it to thousands of people, from being financially challenged to generating over a million dollars in a year, from being overweight to achieving peak fitness, my journey has been transformative. In this video, you're not just going to hear about my journey, you're going to learn the essence of it. I'm going to share with you the strategies, the mindset shifts, the crucial changes that enabled me to turn my aspirations into reality. This is not just about dreaming big, it's about how and the practical steps you can start taking today to leave those dreams. So if you are ready to redefine your limits and reshape your life, stay with me. This might be the turning point you have been waiting for. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Amma Ba'd, welcome to this full guide, this tutorial and this presentation of my protocol, my life protocol that has helped me to accomplish many different things. Once you start using this protocol and once you start applying it in your life, at one point you might get burnt out, that's something normal. And so you will need a reference to go back to. Of course, you can use this you know, full guide and this tutorial as a reference, but as well, I want you to have something physical. So I will give you a few resources in the form of a PDF for you to go back and use as a reference when you start feeling that you are, that you are burning out, all right? So in this video and in this tutorial, we are going to talk about the mindset you need to adapt. Second thing, we are going to talk about how to set goals, how to plan for those goals, how to work towards those goals, the execution part of it, and how to maintain. So let's get into the first step. The first step of the mindset that you need to have, that you need to adapt, that is a must. And we will talk about this. It's not just an, a nice trait to have. It's a must. As a Muslim, once you have said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah the first pillar of Islam, once you have accepted Islam, is the mindset and the understanding that only Allah Azza wa Jal can give you something. That only Allah Azza wa Jal can take something away from you. That only Allah Azza wa Jal, if you fear people, only Him can decide if these people can take something away from you, or if these people can hurt you, or if these people will prevent you from achieving your goals. That only Allah Azza wa Jal can make something that's difficult easy for you. That only Allah Azza wa Jal will give you a solution when you face a problem in the goal that you are trying to achieve. That only Allah Azza wa Jal will give you strength and energy when you feel weak. That only Allah Azza wa Jal will give you the power to stop procrastinating if you want to start chasing a particular goal. This is a thing that you need to embody, that it needs to be become automatic. Just as how automatic it is when somebody tells you, put your hand in this fire, the same way how automatic it is for your system, your body, to understand that if you put your hand in that fire, you will get burned, the same way your body and your system needs to understand that only Allah have full power over everything, over even the leaf when falling from a tree. This leaf is only falling from this tree because Allah allowed it. Everything goes by Him and He decides if that thing is happening or not. He has full superior superiority full power, full authority over every insignificant, insignificant thing 
happening in this universe. Once you embody this thing and once you understand with its full meaning, then you have no other option then submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. I want to share with you a hadith. This hadith says that it was reported by Anas radiallahu anhu that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, لِيَسْأَلْ أَحَدُكُمْ رَبَّهُ حَاجَتَهُ حَتَّى يَسْأَلَهُ الْمِلْحِ وَحَتَّى يَسْأَلَهُ شِزْعَ نَعْلِهِ إِذَا انْقَطَعْ Whatever in your life is happening, only Allah Azza wa Jalla is able to fix that problem. Even if it's something as simple as you thinking, oh, I need, I need salt. In your mind, our system, the way how the average person is submitted to Allah, his level of, of submission doesn't attain the level of, subhanAllah, I, I'm in the middle of cooking, I need salt. The average person doesn't think, yeah, yeah Allah Azza wa Jalla, yeah Allah, provide me with salt. And then goes ahead, and takes his feet and start taking action towards the means of going to the supermarket and attaining it. But we need to understand that if Allah doesn't want you to get this, this milh, this salt, you will not attain that. So when we're talking about setting goals, when we're talking about achieving our life mission, we need to first understand and have in our system this belief that we won't be able to achieve it unless we are submitted to the one whose every single decision that's taken in this world. And as we said, even the leaf falling from a tree, every decision is taken by him. So Allah Azza wa Jal wants you to fully submit to him. Allah says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا دُخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَّةِ All you who have believed, only for those who have believed, you need to submit to enter the submission of Allah Azza wa Jal, to enter the deen of Islam with full submission, wholeheartedly into it. Not as Allah says in another verse, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى حَرْفِ and from, those, from people, from amongst the people is those who worship Allah Azza wa Jal ala harf. One foot in, one foot out. On the edge. You don't want to be like those. You want to be a full-time believer at any moment. In times of difficulty, times of ease. So you need to enter Al-Islam with full sentence, both feet in. Submit completely to Allah Azza wa Jalla. So we won't achieve our goals. We won't achieve our plans. We won't be able to set goals. We won't be able to execute them. We, will be we won't be able to maintain them if we are not in full submission of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this brings me to the next point, which is having self-esteem. Now imagine being part of an army in the times of battles with swords, but your army have firearms, while the other army only have swords. Any man would feel invincible being part of the army. You get to just stay back and wait for the soldiers of the other army with swords to appear on the horizon and just pull the trigger one after one how confident would you feel being part of the army the same confidence you should feel being part of allah's army in this dunya so once you have high self-esteem based on the fact that you are submitted to the most powerful so as an extension you are going to be powerful as well because you are submitted to him, then there's no reason for you to have negative thoughts. I think, oh, I don't know if I can do this because I uh, mean, I'm just not a person that accomplishes goals. Oh, I'm just a procrastinator. <laughs> I'm just weak. I'm just... All of these negative thoughts that you have is only restraining you from actually achieving more. As a Muslim, you need to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal will give you whatever you ask him. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, 
وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم ان تفسير ابن كثير in regards of this ayah he explains قال الناس لو نعلم اي ساعات ندعو فنزلت واذا سالك عبادي عني فاني قريب نجيب دعوه الداعي اذا دعا فليستجيب لي وليؤمن بي It's very important at the end of the ayah here it says وليؤمنوا بي and let them believe it you need to believe when you make dua that Allah Azza wa Jal will give it to you because he said in the Quran that he will give it to you and he said in the Quran as well that in Allah la yukhlifu al-mi'ad Allah doesn't break promises so all of these things you need to believe it in tafsir ibn kathir as well wa qala al-imam ahmad haddathana sulaiman ibn daud haddathana shu'bat haddathana qatada an anas anna an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala yaqulu Allah ta'ala ana 'inda dhanni 'abdi bi wa ana ma'ahu idha da'ani so Allah Azza wa Jal will give you according to what you believe of him, according to your thoughts of him. If you believe with full certainty that Allah Azza wa Jal will give you what you ask him, he will then go ahead and give it to you. It was reported from the Salaf that when they would make dua, salatul istisqa, they will make salah to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for rain. Before praying, they would prepare the outside, covering things, getting ready for the rain, even though they haven't prayed yet. But that was the level of their certainty that Allah Azza wa Jal will respond to their dua. So you need to have self-esteem in this sense, in the sense that I know I can accomplish this goal that I'm setting myself to accomplish. Because I am submitted to the most powerful and he doesn't break promises. And he told me that if I ask him, he will give me. And this brings me to the next point, which is limiting beliefs. So limiting beliefs are basically thoughts that you have based on most of the times on past experiences. You think because... Once you try to memorize the Quran and you didn't succeed, maybe it was because of the way you was using, maybe it was because of the teacher, maybe it was because of how busy you was at that time in your life. But because you have already tried it and it didn't work out, now you have this limiting belief that you are not capable to memorize in the Quran. And because you have this, this thought, you don't even try to start it. And that's why it's called a limiting belief. Because just based on this belief, you don't even start it. So you have already restricted yourself from achieving that goal. And many times as well, it happens from how we have been raised up. And people around us telling us certain things. SubhanAllah, I still remember when I was about 12 years old, somebody told me about... Uh, my basketball career, right? They told me, if you don't go to these workouts, at that time, they gave me the opportunity to go into some extra, um, they call them technification or like improvement of your dribbling and, and, and skills uh, of basketball. And I just was too lazy to go. And somebody told me, if you don't go, you will not become a professional basketball player. So imagine this was tw when I was 12. It's more than 15 years ago. It's almost like 18 years ago. And I still remember just because somebody told me that. And it hit me so deep inside of me that I actually started believing it. If I don't go to these workouts, I'm not going to achieve this. And so sometimes growing up, People say certain things to you. They might say it jokingly. Your older brother, he might say, man, you dumb, man, you stupid, boy. You, you, you slow, you don't understand these things. You, don't, you are not able to accomplish these things. You are too weak, you are too this, you are too that. And these things that people drills in your mind, whether it's jokingly or whether it's seriously, your subconscious mind doesn't make the difference in between these things. And so you start believing it. And you start, once you, uh, once you, adapt a belief, you start acting upon it. And once you start acting upon it, it becomes a behavior. 
And after it becomes a behavior and a habit, it becomes your destiny. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. If you believe that Allah is capable of all things, you will not, as a believer, have these type of limiting beliefs. It's forbidden for you to believe that you cannot accomplish this thing. Because of all the ayat that we have mentioned, Allah said that if you ask Him, He will give you. So why wouldn't it be possible for you to achieve this thing? And so with these three things, submission to Allah Azza wa Jal, having a high self-esteem and getting rid of all limiting beliefs, there is no way that you don't accomplish things. So now we have completed the first chapter of this tutorial, which is mindset. And now we are going to go into the second chapter, which is goal setting. A lot of us, we have these high aspirations and this motivation to accomplish more, to be more efficient. However, we don't know what goals to set. I don't know what my life mission should be. I don't know what my yearly goal should be. And so it's important for you to know that Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, in the first order and in the first command of the Quran, if you start from Surah Al Fatiha and you start reading, the first thing Allah tells you to do is, Ya ayyuha nasu, u'budu rabbakum. All right, so that's the, the main command and that's the main thing that we are supposed to do in this dunya as believers. If that is the case, then my goals and my aspirations should be aligned to this. It should be a worship. All right, so whether you want to start a business, whether you want to make millions, whether you want to be strong, whether you want to become more intelligent, whether you want to memorize the Quran, whether it's dunyawi, whether it's something that you want to accomplish that is material, or whether it's spiritual, like memorizing the Quran, or becoming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, it needs to align with the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so it will be completely retarded for someone to set a goal that will trigger the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal. Like for example, I want to become the biggest drug dealer of my block. It's something that is forbidden and that Allah wouldn't like. So how is He going to bless a thing that goes against what He told you to do? And so make sure that any goal you set yourself to accomplish, whether it's making money, whether it's getting strong, whether it's getting more intelligent, whether it's getting more powerful, is for the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. I want to make millions of dollars to spend that money in the cause of Allah Azza wa Jal. I want to get stronger and I want to look better to show people that those who submit to, to Allah Azza wa Jal, they look like this because most people look at a person that's strong and that has abs and that has big shoulders as somebody that's powerful. So I want them to look at me and see that those who submit to Allah Azza wa Jal are like this because I want to represent Allah Azza wa Jal with the best of looks. And I don't want people to look at someone who submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal and he is broke and he is fat and he is dumb, he is slow. No, I want to be the best at all aspects of life. Whatever people think that's the best in this dunya, I want to have. So I, so people see that being submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal gives you all the good in this dunya. And if you make your goals a worship, then you are going to be constantly in worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now we get to the chapter of planning. So first we need to set a life mission. You don't want to be like a sluggish snail, aimlessly just waking up every day, just going to the same exact routine, probably struggling because you have never you know, even tried to, to get the best of the best. So of course, if you have high aspirations, that's not going to be your case and you're going to want to achieve more. So you need to sit down and, and see what is your life mission? What is the ideal life 
that I would like to have in a few years. It might be, for example, having $100,000 in your bank account, having memorized the Quran, having a few wives, having I don't know how many children, and living in this place, living in this type of house is my life mission. And this is what I work towards every single day. So I read it every morning to remind myself why did I wake up for that morning and what is my purpose. So for me is a worship and I worship Allah Azza wa Jal through my life mission. This brings me to the next step of this chapter, which is our daily routine. Once we have a life mission, we know now what our daily routine should look like. So for example, if my life mission is to memorize the Quran, uh, get married, have three children, if have a hundred thousand dollars sitting in my bank that perhaps later you are going to invest into something, whatever it might be, right? So memorize Quran, uh, get married, ha get, have three children, for example, and a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. All right. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to tackle one thing at a time. So if out of those four things, certain things you will be able to accomplish at the same time. For example, get married and memorize Quran. You can do these two things at the same time. But for example, accomplishing the goal of getting $100,000 in your bank account, that might, be, that might require a big chunk of your energy. So you might want to perhaps accept the fact of having a job right now and let me just tackle memorizing the Quran. Or the opposite, let me first get this money and then once I have the money, I will memorize the Quran. However, in whatever order you want to accomplish it, what you want to do is, for example, I want to start with the Quran. All right, perfect. So what do we do now? We take the life mission. The life mission is memorize the Quran. And every year you want to give yourself about no more than three goals to accomplish. And those three goals cannot be, cannot take your whole life, your whole day to accomplish. Like for example, memorizing the Quran is a hefty task. Unless you decide to memorize the Quran a very small portion every single day and at the same time do other things, that's fine. But if you are like me, who, who is very intense when, when chasing a goal, I just want to chase that. I want to accomplish that and then chase the next goal. However, if you want to memorize the Quran this year or at least get closer to that goal, Let's say that, for example, this year, I just want to memorize 12 chapters. And each chapter is about 20 pages. All right, so that means that on a weekly basis, I will have to memorize a certain portion. And I know that that portion will be about a little bit over half a page a day. So now, once I take the yearly goal, and I reverse, reverse engineer and I break down, okay, what do I need to do on a monthly basis to accomplish this yearly goal? What do I need to do on a weekly basis to accomplish this monthly goal that will lead me to the yearly goal? And what do I need to do on a daily basis every single day that will bring me closer to accomplishing this weekly goal that then will bring me closer to accomplishing the monthly goal that then will allow me to accomplish the yearly goal? And that's what you want to do. You want to have yearly goals to determine what your monthly goals should be, to determine what your weekly goals should be, to determine what your daily routine is going to be every single day. And what is So of course, when you are setting goals, you want to, to look at your responsibilities. For example, you might, have, you might have children already. You might have to wake up every day at 8 a.m. and bring them to school. And so two hours of, of your day are going to be spent in that responsibility you might be working and so eight hours of your day you are not going to be able to to actively chase your goals so 10 hours of your day might be restricted by your responsibilities and that's fine so you need to realistically set a goal okay so i have 10 hours in the day that i cannot work towards my goals but i have four hours that i can use on a daily basis to get closer 1% to my yearly goal. 
So what can I do in those four hours? Is it possible for me in those four hours to memorize a little bit over half a page of the Quran? And so determine based on that, for example, is those four hours that I have in a day, is those two hours that I have in a day, is that one hour that I have in a day realistically enough for me to get closer to the goal of getting married, to get closer to the goal of um, saving for $100,000 in my bank account at the end of the year. And based on that, set the yearly goal, a realistic yearly goal. If it's not possible for you to memorize half a page in the amount of time that you have free in a day, then set a smaller goal. For example, just two ayahs. But you know that those two ayahs, if you memorize two ayahs in a day, how much have you will have you memorized in a year? That might be maybe in a year you will have memorized three chapters. I don't know right now. I will have to do the math. But at least you know and you have set consciously the goal of memorizing three chapters in this year of the Quran. And so I know that every day, if I memorize two ayahs, at the end of two, two verses of the Quran, at the end of the year, I'm going to get to my yearly goal. So that will give you a peace inside of you. And you know that every day you have set a realistic goal that is very easy for you to accomplish. It doesn't burn you out after a week. It doesn't burn you out after two weeks. And you know that if you do that every day, you will achieve your yearly goal. And because you, because it's very easy for you and very realistic for you to do on a daily basis, it gives you at the end of the day, once you are done with it, a, a burst of dopamine. And that burst of dopamine gives you motivation to keep on going. And because you keep on going and you keep seeing the results and you keep seeing your progress, it motivates you to, to accomplish more. So at the end of the year, you accomplish this goal. And next year, you set a, another goal or you set a stronger goal. And because perhaps you now have accomplished the goal of saving this amount of money, now you are able to, to enhance your lifestyle. So that gives you another burst of dopamine and you keep on growing. You keep on getting better and better at this skill, which is the skill of life and the skill of becoming a high performance individual and it gives you more and more and more and more and more and it's a ongoing a ongoing and compounding system and process that only allows you to get better and better in life so now we have the theory of how to develop your daily routine now let's go into the practical part of it which is the execution this is my most important thing of my whole protocol. I cannot function if I didn't have a good sleep. And this is how it is with any human being, really. So the first step of your sleeping routine should be to, to recognize that. Naam, Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ libasa. We have made the night for sleep and the day to live. As well was reported from by the Prophet Muhammad that he said la sahra So it's disliked by the Deen of Al Islam to stay awake after the prayer of Aisha without any necessity. You should incorporate in your sleeping routine a time before sleeping to sit down and prepare your tomorrow today. So that way, when you wake up in the morning, you don't waste energy or mental strength thinking about what you're going to do. Okay, well, so my monthly goal is this, so maybe I should start with, with this. Yeah, let me start with this. You start doing the thing after five minutes. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with this other thing. Um, actually, uh, I don't, you don't want to have this in the morning. You, you, you can experience this, this thinking of actually I'm going to do this tomorrow, I'm going to do, but it has to do on the day before. So that way when you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes, you make your wudu, you go pray Salat al-Fajr, and straight after Fajr, you do your adhkar and your necessities, and straight away as soon as possible you start your, your, your work. You start whatever you have 
set that's going to be your main priority in the day, in your daily routine that we have set. If we take the example before, memorizing half a page. So you do that as soon as you wake up, as soon as possible, basically. If it's something else, another goal that you have set yourself to do, for example, uh, I have a business and uh, I want to increase my monthly revenue. And that requires for me to reach out to 10 companies on a daily basis. So that's what you're, what you're going to do on a, on a daily basis as soon as you wake up because that's what will bring the biggest effect and will bring the results to your weekly, monthly, and yearly goals, which will get you closer to your life, to your life mission. Second thing in terms of your sleep is so important, subhanAllah. Like it, it, it almost knowing this, it almost feels like like I have information to something secret or something. And it's it's something that I got to know only maybe like three or four years ago. And and this phenomenon is, is how sleep works. How, what happens when you sleep? And, and something called sleeping cycles. So in very simple English, what happens in the human body is that he requires anything between four to six cycles of sleep in a space of 24 hours. One cycle of sleep is one hour and a half. And on average, it takes an individual to fall asleep about 15 minutes. This means that if you don't sleep a full cycle or that cycle gets interrupted, you will wake up sluggish. So a lot of people ask themselves, why do I, I, sleep, I sleep seven hours, eight hours? Because I go sleep at 10 and, and this is what everybody does, right? So it's 10 right now. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake up at 6. So 10, 11, 12, 1. It doesn't work like that. It's not all, it's not because you're in bed. It's, your time in bed doesn't equal to sleeping time. You wake up many times in the night. And many different factors in, your, in, your, in how you approach sleep will cause you to wake up in the night and have interrupted sleep, even if you don't feel it. All right, so we have something called sleeping cycles, and you require at least four cycles a day, right, in a space of 24 hours. So this means that, that if you are going to sleep at 10 p.m., you are going to have to sleep. You are going to have to count the 15 minutes that it will take you to fall asleep. If you get to the middle of the cycle, for example, you sleep one hour and you get to deep sleep, almost at REM sleep, and you wake up there, even if you slept eight hours, you will wake up sluggish. However, if you slept only four hours, but it was four, but it was, uh, in this case, it would be, let's not say four hours, let's say, three full cycles of uninterrupted sleep. From the time you fell asleep to the time you woke up, you were sleeping and you had enough deep sleep and enough REM sleep, you will, you will wake up super refreshed as if you slept eight hours. So knowing this is a secret weapon because Sometimes we think, oh, I, can't, I need eight hours to feel good, man, next day. But in reality, if you str strategically sleep and you set yourself to sleep for four cycles or three cycles or two cycles, you will wake up refreshed. Believe me, tr trust me and, and try this on your own and, and you will be surprised. I will leave a website that I use um, before going to sleep and it calculates if you sleep at that time, at what time you should wake up? And it tells you at what time you should, you should wake up to complete full cycles. So check it out and try it the next uh, night that you go sleep. Now, it's important that you stay asleep. 
that when you go sleep, you stay asleep. So from the things that helps me stay asleep is having a blackout, fully dark room. Because if you are sleeping and you are in your light sleep and you open your eyes a little bit and it's bright or there is a light that the corner of your eye sees that will cause you to wake, to wake up or to stay at your light sleep, which is not the, the level of sleep that you want to, to stay at because that's not the one that we said that helps you It helps your muscles recover, etc. All right, so blackout room, um, white noise machine. Go to Amazon and type white noise machine. It's a machine that makes noise, basically. It just goes like, and your, your ear gets, gets used to hearing that noise. And it does, and it's basic, the purpose of it is to block out noises on the back. Your sister waking up in the middle of the night banging your door, your father comes home at night late, uh, your significant other wakes up in the middle of the night, whatever you might be, it will help you not hear those sounds. The next thing is, of course, the aura ring. The aura ring helps you see on a daily basis, what did I do last night that helped me get a better night last night? What did I, did I eat too late? And, and the app as well tells you, it seems like you have eaten too late. It seems like you slept too late. It seems like you, um, you know, you are, you're starting to get sick. Literally, I caught COVID um, in the year of COVID. And the app told me before, before I actually started feeling it. As well as not eating or drinking too much. If not, I try to not drink at all or eat at all three hours before going to sleep. That increases my sleep immensely. And of course, lastly, is sleeping early, like right after Isha. There is something special about the first third, the first third of the night. If you sleep right after Isha, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., you sleep three full cycles and you wake up at like 3 a.m., well, lie, you feel like, Subhanallah, like you slept 10 hours. So there is something special about the first, the first third of the night. And I'm pretty sure you, you felt it before where you, you stood up until after Fajr or until 3 a.m. And even though you slept eight hours, you wake up so tired just because you, you went to sleep late. This brings me to the next point, which is having regular exercise. If you, guys, if you have regular exercise, your body will get tired. And at night, your body will ask you to go sleep. And you will have deeper sleep. That means that you will have more deep sleep. Remember when I told you light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep? Deep sleep is the one that helps you recover. So you will have more of it. And you probably felt it before where one day you, you walked probably 50,000 steps and you got home and you was just... I'm done. I'm ready to go sleep. You lay down and you, you're, you sleep like a baby. You drew, you, you, the only thing, you don't even remember how you fell asleep. And that's because your body was super tired. So getting your body super tired actually helps you get more deep sleep. And if you get more deep sleep, it actually, it actually helps you to recover better. And your brain always stays sharp. And of course, you guys seen in the beginning of the video, my transformation and how I went from overweight to, to, uh, to shred it. And so I won't have time to talk about it here, but I will link a video where I will explain more in depth how did I accomplish that goal of um, going from overweight to shred it. Now, the next step is your diet. Your diet, as we said, with your sleep is very important. If you sleep, if you eat only junk food, you will, you will feel bloated, you will feel unease in your stomach, it won't give you good sleep, next day in the morning you won't be able to focus because you, you keep on burping and, and you keep on tasting the same food you ate yesterday. So your diet, and as, as 
some experts call it, is your second, your gut is your second brain. So whatever you put in your stomach will directly affect how you, how you function. It was reported by Al-Imam al-Shafi'i that he said, Al-Shib'u yuthqilu al-badan wa yuzilu al-fitna wa yajlubu al-nawm wa yudaif sahibahu an al-ibadah. So as a general rule, you want to follow the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he taught us to keep one thuluth, one portion of your stomach for liquid, one portion of your stomach for food, one portion of your stomach for, for air. And so when you eat, don't eat too much. And in general, what has helped for me is eat one main meal a day. So around 12 p.m., uh, I have a shake, a protein shake with some dates and some oats and things like that. And that gives me enough energy to, to keep on working. But at the same time, it doesn't decrease my energy where, where I'm like, oh, I just ate so much. And then later on at around 6 p.m., 5 p.m., I have my main meal. All right. So in terms of diet, uh, of course, depending on your goals, you will have to eat a certain way or, or another way. In the video that I told you guys about my transformation, how I went overweight to shred it, of course, diet is 80% of it. So I will talk about it more in depth in there. And then lastly, in this chapter, we are going to talk about the environment design. And environment design is basically the art of deleting all distractions around you and design your environment in a way that it will help you achieve your goals. Very simple example. For example, if you have to wake up in the morning and you know you have to memorize half a page, but you know you have to do it in the morning because then you work. And you know that when you work, you come back home and you are tired and you, don't, and you will more likely not do it. And if you do it, you won't be as efficient. So you have to do it in the morning for sure. All right, but the problem is that when I wake up in the morning, um, I tend to pick up my phone and spend one hour scrolling through emails or scrolling through Instagram or whatever it might be. The phone distracts me. Or in the morning, I'm super tired because the night before I was playing with the children or I was talking to my wife or whatever it might be. So what you need to do is you need to analyze the things that distract you and that restricts you from accomplishing the goals and the daily tasks that lead you to accomplishing your weekly goals, monthly goals, and yearly goals, and systemize that. Make a system. For example, oh, but if I don't go sleep early, then my wife is going to be angry at me. Okay, well, finish your days earlier and spend, finish your days, for example, three, th three hours earlier and spend you know, two hours with your children and your, and your wife. Or my phone is in this a distraction, for example. Lock it away. In the, in the next chapter, we'll talk about uh, a box that I use to lock my phone away and to not distract me while I'm working or doing something that requires a lot of focus on distracted block of time. But basically, that's what you want to do. You want to analyze what is distracting you from the tasks and get rid of it. Or at least design the environment in a way where it won't distract you. For example, every day when I, when I get home, um, I go into my, my Uber Eats app or Talabat app or Deliveroo app and I can't help it but, but buy food. All right, well, let's start by deleting the app. Let's start by deleting the app and perhaps adding another layer of difficulty. Like for example, um, every time I get money, I get disposable income, I will send it to my savings account. That requires for me to go to the bank and request for them to unlock it for me to get that money. Or I will send it to an account somewhere, uh, you know, I will send it to my mom and I will tell her to keep it, whatever it might be. You need to set systems that will, by default, make the thing Make the thing that you are getting distracted to 
too far and too difficult to attain that your body automatically will say, ah, oh, you know what, never mind, let's be focused. So the whole concept is that you focus is always there. The problem is the things that come in the thing in the way that distract you. So get rid of those things. Sometimes it might be people, sometimes it might be the environment, sometimes it might be devices. Get rid of those and you will find focus. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. And just like this, we got to the last chapter of this tutorial and this full guide. If you made it all up until here, tell me in the comments, this is how I will take control over my life. Or this is how I will become more disciplined. Or this is how I will change my life. Or whatever you think that this is how you are going to do. I want to see those loyal viewers and those disciplined, non-short attention nerds in the comment section, inshallah. So let's tackle the last chapter, starting with deep work. The concept of deep work is basically a chunk of time of unindistracted and focused and uninterrupted time where you work on something. So let's say, for example, if you have to memorize half a page a day of the Quran, or you have to reach out to 10 companies a day, you do it in a time and you let everybody know, you use environment design and you let everybody know in your family at this time, please don't message me, don't talk to me, don't knock on my door, don't tap my shoulder. I am in full deep, deep work and I have switched on my deep work mode. I just need three hours, I just need four hours of uninterrupted time. Experts, they say that on average it takes 25 minutes for someone to, to reach a level of focus. So what happens is just like your sleeping cycles. If you start 25 minutes in and in within those 25 minutes of you trying to work on something, you get distracted by your phone, by somebody talking to you, yo, uh, Muhammad, do you want something to eat? Or you get a delivery from Amazon. Oh wait, I get a delivery. You go, you get up or you have put on the stove some food and after 15 minutes you have to get up from what you were trying to focus on to check and and steer the, the food and so on. It literally needs to be a chunk and a block of time that is uninterrupted. Even if you have to not drink that much water so you don't have to get up and go to the toilet, do yes. so. Like for example, right now, the best example is me editing this video. It, I've been working on this video since 6 a.m. It's 6 p.m. right now. And so, the only thing, the only moment when I stop is to go to Juma, and then I came back and I continue to record and edit. And my phone has been locked up since the, since, since, since last night, actually, <laughs> since last night, my phone has been locked up. I have this phone. This phone is like, just like people has access to it. People that, um, like just friends and stuff. And this is my work and family phone. And so this brings me to the next topic, which is distraction management. Now, in order for you to achieve a successful deep work session, it's required for you to get rid of all and absolutely all distractions. And in our times and nowadays, the biggest distra distraction is this phone, is the phone. Online, the phone can... In one year, if you really counted how much time you spend on your phone, you will be surprised, subhanAllah. So this simple and quick fix of locking your phone, what I do is I put my phone in this in this box and I set, I set the timer. I set the timer here. And it doesn't it doesn't allow me to open it until the timer is done. At this moment, at this time. This phone will be unlocked in 11 hours. So this phone, I check it like every three days or so on. Sometimes I go one week without checking it. And, and this phone is actually unlocked right now, but it was locked since last night. And that helps me to uh, get up in the morning. And as they say, out of sight, out of mind. So because the phone, you, you can't reach it. And so, is, is out of your mind. You don't even try to, to, um, to get distracted by it. So 
with anything else in life that distracts you on a daily basis, you need to have an ongoing analysis of distractions in your life. Now, the third topic is downtime. After you start this journey, this journey of high performance and high intensity work, you will get burned out. Like you have to know that. And that's the reason why you probably started certain goals. And after a week, after two weeks, you got burnt out and you completely dropped it. So you need to leave by this quote, which is don't miss one day because it will break momentum and don't miss two days because it will build a pattern that is hard to break. And after you go into the third day, fourth day, five, fifth day, and that's it. You are not in your focus mode anymore. And the only thing you do is you let month pass by years and you never accomplish your goals. So be mindful of having downtime, like actually forcing yourself to not work, to not force yourself to overwork. Like for example, do too many hours more than what you set yourself to do. You know that in, in an hour you can memorize half a page. Why would you keep on pushing yourself for three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, just because you got that burst of motivation? No, just do half a page today. Halas, we did half a page. Don't get over motivated and say, oh no, I'm just gonna do three pages today. Ah, Then you do however many hours it takes you to do that. And then next day you are completely exhausted. So you, you don't have the energy to work on your daily routine. And then you miss one day, you miss two days, you miss three days, and it breaks the momentum. So having downtime is very important. Spend time with your family, spend time uh, with yourself, enjoy a vacation, whatever it might be. Don't get into this intense focus mode, only work, only studies, only my goals, my goals, my goals, my goals, my goals, because actually having downtime, it will help you to come back to your daily routine and be able to do it in a more fluent way. Lastly, you want to have consistent simplicity, meaning don't do too many goals, as we said earlier in the, in the past chapters. Don't set yourself to accomplish too many things in a day or too many things in a year, because then it becomes overcomplicated. Keep it as simple as possible. All I need to do is memorize half a page a day, for example. All I need to do is reach out to 10 companies a day, for example, and just keep it simple. But the most important thing is going to be that compound effect of you keeping, keep on doing that thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Even though it's small, it's better. And as it was reported by the Prophet Muhammad that he said, خَيْرُ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَامُهَا وَإِنْقَلْ so make sure you, you prioritize consistency over quantity in this case. And just keep it simple. Keep your day simple. That's all I'm going to do for this year. And you know that at the end of the year, you are going to accomplish this goal and you are going to be able to keep on going until next year, until next year, until next year. And that will keep on building your strength to accomplish goals and year after year you will set yourself more challenging goals that it will just be regular to you because you have built that muscle you have built that strength of keep on doing this daily routine now lastly i want to give you access to a template like this for you to create your own board to look at I literally look at this while brushing my teeth every day. And as you can see here, and this is super personal, and I was actually thinking, should I show them or not? But I really want you guys to, to benefit from this. And, and I think full transparency will is the only thing that will actually, you know, allow you to really benefit. So first, I have my life goal in here. This is my life goal. My goal is to finish all the important books of Arabic from Al-Ajrumiya to Al-Kitab, memorize the Quran and get a PhD in Arabic. Help uh, uh, 1,000 students through proficiency. 
uh, and build the, air, the curriculum to be taught in universities. This is my life goal. So I have here these that I read every day. And by reading it every day, you keep that emotional attachment to your mission on a daily basis so you don't forget. And so then you come here and your affirmations should be things that are directly aligned with the tasks that allows you to complete your weekly, monthly, and yearly goal. So for me, for example, this year, as you guys can see here, this year for me, the title of this year, it was building the habit of revising the Quran. And so my main goal was to be able to read from Nas to Furqan, from Hev, from Hevl. Uh, the second, it was make a million profit. And the third one was to build physical under the Institute. This one, we actually, I wouldn't say we failed. We just changed our mind in the middle of the year. And that's fine as well. So sometimes you might have a goal. That's what I want you to, and this is why I want to be transparent with you. Sometimes you will set a goal. And in the middle of the year, you will realize that, well, actually it doesn't make sense or actually there's something better or whatever it might be. So for us, for example, instead of doing this at Anders Institute, we actually built our own platform on uh, our own platform. So, so it was a better move actually. So I'm in the toilet. I cannot, I cannot praise my Lord, but, <laughs> but you guys uh, get what I'm saying. Now the affirmations. So this, this life goal, these yearly goals. Okay. So I'm looking at, okay, this is what I want to achieve while I'm brushing my teeth. And then these things are directly aligned with achieving this. So for example, I repeat this every day and I drill this into my mind. You guys remember when I told you that your subconscious mind doesn't make a difference between what you say jokingly and what you say seriously. So the same thing happens with your affirmations. If you repeat something so much, your subconscious mind will start believing it and you will start acting upon it and you will start acting upon it and then you will ad adapt it as a habit and they will become your destiny. So I say I sleep straight after Aisha. I religiously re review Quran every morning. I keep 10% percentage body fat all year round. This, for example, I wrote this out of ignorance. I mean, not out of ignorance, but I realized in the middle of the year that keeping 10%, it, is, it will be very hard for my lifestyle. So anyways, I've been staying at around 15, 15 to, to 13, something like that. I don't randomly scroll through social media. That's what dumb people do. I will teach Arabic to 100 people. Now here, you see, my life goal changed in the middle of the year from 100 to a, to 1,000. I focus by deleting all distractions. I only post what aligns with my brand. I don't travel unless necessary. It puts me off track of everything. I don't let woman's irrationality weaken my emotional stability. Shaitan wants to corrupt the Muslims by keeping them away from Arabic. So I fight him every day. So basically, these things are things that I want to, I want to be like this, basically. So I read these things and I keep on saying what I do, even if I don't do it. Even if you don't do it, even if you are not like this, write it and say you do it and this and say that you are like this. Because if you say so, it will become, it will become your habit. It will become your, your paradigm and it will become your way of uh, seeing yourself as. I hope to meet you one day in real life and you tell me, you remember that video you made? It helped me accomplish this, this, and this, and this. Check this video if you are interested about these type of topics. And I'll see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.